Good morning everybody. Today I want to show you a short and simple trick how you can add variations. So for instance, um, color variations to objects carrying the same shader material without actually having to create different um, yeah, shader or material instances of this um, material. Uh, yeah, so for usually you could have a setup like this where you have, I just stick for the beginning with the example of color variation. So you have a uniform with color and yeah, you just assign this later to the albedo. So your object has the color. And if you want to have these individual objects having the same shader, because there is a lot of more um, complex shader code in here, then you would create different material instances and play around with these colors here to yeah, colorize them differently. Um, that of course works, but to be honest, I find it always a bit complicated because I like to do some stuff like this to add variations by color or how to blend in different textures or variations in roughness or whatever. So um, I usually would tend to create really a lot of material instances. Of course, uh, you also have to add them to your objects. Now let me just show you the short shot of this scene. Um, I apologize for very poor frame rate at this moment, probably, because um, my actual computer is at the moment a bit broken, so I have to work on this small office notebook here. Um, but you see, yeah, I have a lot of houses, for instance, I want to create a city, and every house should look differently. So it's a bit tedious to go through this process of always assigning uh, randomly these different material instances. And so uh, what I used to do is creating a script that was assigning all these instances, but um, then my game is networked, so I have to make sure that all these um, automated material assignments are also replicated correctly between server and client, which makes it a bit more complicated. And as I said, I like to do this quite a lot, so I was a bit tired of creating material instances, and yeah, I remembered a short trick from my Unreal Engine three times, where somebody showed me how to actually make this without having to create material instances. And during the last days, I remembered how this trick was going and I could also uh, yeah, replicate this in Godot. And I want to show it to you because I think it's a, um, a neat trick to use. Um, so what we're going to do is first remove this. And we will actually apply, exploit the word matrix. Um, the word matrix, to be honest, I don't really know what it actually, or what it exactly is. Um, apparently it carries a lot of information about each object's wood transform, which is good, but I don't exactly know how it's composed. Um, I just figured out if, for instance, you take this slicing of it, you get a color which is dependent on the object's rotation around this axis. Or what I find very useful is if we take this, then we have something which is independent on rotation, but dependent on the object's position in the yeah, x and z plane, or x, x, y, z, actually in all three wood dimensions. Um, which is mostly what I can exploit for that. So this is useful. So all the objects now have different colors, but we of course already see two problems. The first is that the, the changing color is gradual, so this isn't really getting to a random behavior. And it's also clipped, so the further I go away from the coordinate center, the coordinates will just reach values where they can't be meaningfully translated into RGB values. So that is something we have to overcome. And Fortunately, we can overcome both problems very simply by making use of the small texture, which I'm just load here, a uniform um, random texture. Should be simple to D, of course. And now in semicolons can save lives. And now I can just load in a random texture, which I have, for instance, here. It's, yeah, it's just a small texture with randomly colored pixels. And now instead of directly assigning these properties of this world matrix into color, we use them as UV coordinates to map on this small color texture. 
because this will lead to discrete colors, so we don't, we don't have this continuous change. So wherever we end up on this texture, we will have a very distinct color. And of course, no matter how large the um, coordinates are getting or the values in this UV um, input, it will wrap around infinitely more or less and will always land on this texture, so we always get um, a valid color from that. So we can just texture um, random text. And now I take root matrix 3 and I want to have this. And voila. Okay, now I have just uh, put them in a position where it's not too distinct. But of course, um, it also depends heavily on how your uh, input colors look like, how saturated they are. But you can already see the concept so that each object, depending on where it's positioned, has a different color, which is nice, which is what I usually want to have. But of course, you also already see the next kind of problem that this is not very suitable for moving objects because they would just flicker around terribly. Um, so I want to try a bit more to find out how this work matrix is actually composed. Uh, I want to try to find one combination of its um, components that is not sensitive to, to um, translation and rotation, but only to scale. So then it would be possible to scale each of these objects just a slightly bit differently by one or two percent, so nobody would really recognize visually. But yeah, we would get different UV coordinates and then also different colors, and then the objects could move around and would just keep their color. And I didn't succeed to do this, so if anybody knows how to do this, please just leave a comment. Otherwise, um, if I succeed, I will put the, an update to the video description. Um, yeah, so I think this is a very nice method, and I just want to show one um, small function that you can also use very easily. Ah, uh, it's in the morning. <laughs> Sorry. Coffee helps to focus a bit. Um, let's just type a short function run which takes. I will just type it and then I will explain. Um, so we want to make a function which um, basically takes the work matrix and returns a random value between a minimum and a maximum value. This is done. This is very similarly texture random text. And now I just for the moment um, do the same as I did below. But of course here you can take we can randomly, or not randomly, but arbitrarily create um, uh, a two D vector. To get the coordinates, you can freely play around with all these different oh. contributions. Oh, hold on a second. My son is just waking up. Okay, so uh, I'm back. I just had to cut this. So let's just continue. Yeah, we create now um, access again access one of the pixels from this um, random color texture, and but just take one of the color channels. And to include more variation, you can of course freely play around with what what matrix contributions you use to generate this UV coordinate, and then also which color channel to take, of course. And then we just return mall times max mall minus min mall plus min mall. and voila. And then you can, for instance, do something like this. Roughness is Root matrix 0 0.3, 1.0, and then you have random roughness for each of these objects, which, okay, at the moment is not so easy to see. Maybe metallic is more obvious. But I think you get the, the point, so you can randomly just uh, create also one dimensional parameters that you can plug into basically everything. And um, the nice thing also is that the work matrix is also accessible from within the vertex shader, so you can also use this for all kind of vertex manipulations. So for instance, I'm using this on my palm trees. They have a quite um, 
primitive wind shader at the moment, but I use the very same method to generate um, a random offset of this uh, sine and cosine functions so that they don't wave all in phase because this would be super apparent. Um, yeah, so again, this is, I think, a very nice trick to super easily create material variations without having to create a lot of instances. Just throw it in there and you're done. Okay, good, that's it. I hope you have a nice time with that and let's see you later.